Good evening, everybody. Is it good? Is it good? Um, are we all set? Um, thank you uh, for coming, and uh, welcome to the second lecture event of the Public Occasion Agency. Uh, before I introduce the event of tonight, uh, I'd just like to say a little word about the Public Occasion Agency. Uh, the Public Occasion Agency, or P POA, has been set up by Scrap Marshall, sitting here at the front, and myself. And the idea is that it will be a, a self-determining framework within the public program of the AA. Um, for tonight, um, we have a kind of outsourced event uh, hosted by Fabrizio and Calvin. Um, they um, proposed uh, tonight's event as a, um, as a kind of experiment to bring people in, bring people's voices in who we physically can't bring to the AA. So we have a kind of a global event here. Um, but they will give you m probably a more precise description of what will happen tonight. Um, just bef before I pass the mic over, I'd like to point out that next Wednesday will be the next event, um, which will be a lecture by Exactitude. We'll currently have an exhibition in the bar. Um, more on that um, on the AA website. Um, please join me in welping, welcoming uh, Fabrizio and Calvin um, with their event, Work Your Talk. Thank you. Thank you. So good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's sharing session, which is part of Public Occasion Agency series of events. However, today's event is slightly of, it's of a slightly different format. So instead of having a lecture, we are having a sharing session on participatory architecture by five different architectural nonprofit organizations in four different countries, which are Montenegro, Singapore, Peru, and Colombia. And it is done through an online conferencing platform, as you can see from our setup with the six screens. And today, Fabrizio and myself will be moderating the session. So why this event? The title of the event has been adapted from the corporate slogan, Walk Your Talk, which essentially means delivering your promises. To some extent, apart from walking your talk, these practices make them work through their community-driven projects. The work they do range from organizing urban discovery studios for high school students to working with disaster or even war struck communities. The raison d'etre of these practices is determined by the communities in which they work for. So this session is brought about to introduce this from other architectural practices to our school community. And why this format? So we are actually experimenting with new modes of delivery for public lectures and discussion. And we thought that we can start this off by using this session as a test bit for future events where we bring together groups of people located remotely into a lecture hall. Um, so given the experimental nature of this setup, we would like to apologize in advance if there's any technical hiccups during the event. <laughs> Actually, we'll be surprised if we go through entirely as scheduled. Uh, the event will start off with a Pechacucha style presentation by each group. Uh, each of them will be presenting their work through a, a total of 20 slides with 20 seconds but to talk about each slide. This will then be followed by a question and answer roundtable discussion on their projects and practices. Before we start the presentation paper, we would like to give a short introduction to each of the speakers today. So from the screen on the top left hand side, you, uh, we have uh, Tatiana Raik representing Expedition from Montenegro. And um, together with other uh, graduates, she established Expedition in 1997 uh, to encourage sustainable spatial development through projects in architecture, urban planning, and cultural heritage. And on the second screen, top middle, we have Joshua Teo representing React from Singapore. It is a group of, um, that is made up of architectural enthusiasts interested in promoting architecture with a social conscience. And in the middle bottom, you have Claudia Amico representing Espacio Expresión from Peru. Together with students of architecture in the city of Pisco, which was struck by an earthquake in three years ago, uh, they have devised a process of reconstruction of the city after an earthquake through art and culture. She was awarded the AA and RIBA Macaslan anniversary to her project, Participation of Women in Construction and Design for Senegal. Uh, Maya Bayeng and Mariana Leguia, which are in the top right, they are also from Peru, from Incluye, which is a practice that explores relationships between architects and the public space in Lima. They also worked on the city of Pisco in a project that they will show later tonight. And in the bottom left, you have uh, Juan Sebastián Bustamante Fernández and Natalia Castaño Cárdenas, 
which represent posibilidades del paisaje, which are from Colombia. They were specifically involved in the regeneration scheme for Medellín, and they have also worked with the Belgian International Cooperative as a technical support on the municipality of Lima in developing public spaces. Okay, so this is a very brief introduction on the, um, on the participants, and I think they'll explain more about their project in a moment. So we'll start off with the session um, with um, Tanya from Expedition. So we'll start off with Tanya from Expedition. Um, the, the nature of this presentation will be quite um, um, Jurassic in, in, in nature in the sense that so what essentially will happen is that they will be presenting um, their, their PowerPoint slides to get so we'll be synchronizing our PowerPoint slides at the same time what you see on the screen here will be exactly what will be played on their screen on their side okay Tanya are you ready okay let's start Uh, yeah, you can start. Uh, sorry, can I start? Uh, yes, you mm -hmm. can start. Um, because, I'm sorry, uh, I, I hear your voice a little bit later. <laughs> maybe, we should, uh, maybe we should start again. Okay, sure, we can start again. Okay, okay. because I hear your vo voice a little bit later. Okay, you can start now. Okay, good. Okay, hello everybody. My name is uh, Tatiana Reich, and I'm coming from Copper, from Tenegro. And uh, uh, we are an NGO. Uh, and today, I, my presentation will be about the possible roles of architects and planners in shaping societies. And I will be talking about my NGO. Uh, first, uh, some basic facts about Montenegro. It is a small country with a population a little bit uh, over uh, half a million. The capital of Korkovica, uh, two UNESCO sites, and this is a former Yugoslav Republic. It gained independence in 2006. Montenegro is the country with uh, great potentials, uh, both natural and uh, cultural. It's a small country with uh, uh, many diversities. Uh, uh, we have uh, different cultures in small region, uh, different religious, uh, rural areas, uh, cultural heritage. But we also have projects uh, mainly in development field. You can see on this slide some um, uh, new development plans, uh, some illegal building examples, uh, some bad reconstruction examples. And uh, you can also see some plans for uh, building in uh, national areas. We have also challenges. It is a uh, European framework. Uh, um, there are only one of few countries in Europe which are not yet uh, part of the European Union. And in that process of accession to the European Union, uh, Montenegro uh, has to accept and respect different EU regulations and laws also related to space. And uh, we think that uh, the changes are needed and uh, that it is important uh, for us to take an active part in creating these changes and that now is the moment to shape the society and it is a chance that uh, must not be missed. And uh, now about my NGO, it started 13 years ago. Uh, it was funded by uh, six students of architecture at Architectural uh, University of Belgrade. And in fact, it started uh, as a, after, after a big student demonstration in 1997, and that was like some kind of energy source for us. And uh, this was our first project. It was a project created by students, for students. It was a research on the heritage of Montenegro, the goal to raise awareness, uh, promote values, and also to offer solutions. Uh, to revitalize this place. And uh, that first project was uh, interesting to some uh, local community, local communities, and they invited us, a uh, group of students, to uh, do similar projects in some rural uh, areas of Montenegro. And uh, we were encouraged with this, and we continue working as an NGO. And uh, we were inspired by uh, one Swedish uh, organization. Uh, and we started organizing uh, volunteer work camps 
uh, for volunteers to learn how to reconstruct uh, some parts of uh, historic, uh, historic structures. And also start organizing uh, exhibitions and lectures and discussions and uh, trying to, uh, to, um, to talk to people about different problems and issues related to space. And uh, we also participated in Venice Biennale in 2004 as a part of Montenegrin Pavilion. And uh, it's a time in learning uh, uh, advocacy issues, how to advocate for space, uh, how to improve public participation, how to involve citizens in uh, making decisions, and organize the many round tables and trainings. And uh, this is uh, one campaign. Uh, they had different uh, target groups uh, involved, like uh, young people, NGOs, uh, citizens, media, and we were trying to raise awareness about And uh, this is one part of, uh, of, the, of the project of involving citizens uh, by organizing a photo exhibition of the most beautiful and least attractive built environment in Montenegro. Uh, we try to uh, we invited people to send us a pair of uh, good and bad photos of built environments. And this is another project on public spaces uh, where we involved uh, students of arts uh, to uh, to try to change public spaces in this small city, Montenegro. Uh, we have participated in approach to all our projects. Uh, in 2004, we started uh, another sector in Expedito, which is XPCO2, uh, dealing with uh, energy efficiency and sustainable development in building, promoting through different activities, trying to connect uh, uh, people from different sectors. We have also published a lot. So far, we published uh, around uh, 23 publications. Uh, translated some new documents, uh, uh, some researches, the read done, some promotion of heritage. And uh, also uh, collaborate a lot with non architects, non planners. And this is uh, uh, one example of collaboration with an NGO dealing with uh, peace and women education. And we help them to reconstruct this building and convert it into the civic center called House of Free Thought. This is my last slide. Uh, it is a, a photo of uh, National Council for Sustainable Development. And uh, we have our representative in this council. And we think it's important to be uh, also where decisions are going to be made. And uh, we think it's important to influence. And uh, I will finish with the sentence of Margaret Mead, the anthropologist, which is inspiring to us. And she said, that, uh, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful citizens can change the world. Indeed, it, it is the only thing that ever has. Thank you for your attention. Welcome. Hello. Yes, okay, thanks. Thank you, Tanya. And next we have um, Joshua. Joshua, Hi. are you ready? Yeah. Okay, you can start now. Go. Okay, uh, good afternoon, all of you. My name is Joshua. Um, I've got Sun Home beside me, although you can't really see him. Um, React was founded in 2006 by us and together with some friends while we were still in architecture school. Um, we felt that in order for architecture to, to remain relevant to society and our community, architects need to look beyond their traditional role as designers and to start thinking about education, culture, heritage, social justice, environment, sustainability, and other civic policies. Um, this is a, a picture where you know I would um, like to just share this quote that uh, designing a successful place or building or neighborhood is very much like creating a delicious bowl of salad. You need different parts to come together. And the ideas that define React have 
evolved greatly over the past three and a half years and to form a combination of practicing and teaching. We aim to represent a new approach to architecture which incorporates engaging and working with political and economic establishments. And in collaborating with others, one of the questions that we always ask is how can architecture value add to other industries? Um, over here you can see how we see ourselves as a platform which uh, liaises with the government, students, architects, um, different parts, uh, different bodies to, to see how um, architecture can value add uh, to each of their work. Um, this is our organizational structure focused on three main areas, exchange, explore and execute. Um, in Explore, we hope to promote real understanding through exhibitions. Mm -hmm. uh, in Explore, we hope to encourage critical thinking experimentation. And, then, and in Execute, we hope to focus on a real impact through sustainable community development. Um, this was one of the first projects that we did. It was an exhibition uh, called Let's Talk About Places, where we asked the question of, of getting just people to come and talk about places. This was very significant for us because we had uh, it was a collaboration between us and a, a steel roofing company which sponsored the steel and, and uh, um, it was experimentation in using materials in different ways. Um, this is a public forum called Architect in Bottle where we were asking the question of um, what is the role of architect? Has it changed? Is it enough just to build buildings? How else can we contribute to society to, so that we can value add uh, into people's lives? Um, one of the things that we do uh, very regularly is also a design sharing session called Really Are. Uh, this is where we get together um, architecture professionals, um, students, uh, people interested in architecture to come and quickly discuss about issues that matter. Uh, for this particular one, it was um, communities. Um, one of the big things that we did in Singapore was called about the Design My Tree Workshops. Um, and this is our, our process of engaging the, the neighborhoods and the communities in the design process. And what happened in, in this workshop is that students uh, were will come together and, and over three days they go into a community, they go into a neighborhood, they start looking at um, the needs of the neighborhood, they start asking questions, they start interviewing people, and, and they start seeing how storming for solutions uh, in, in these neighborhoods. Um, our, our vision of course is to be able to do this workshop in as many neighborhoods and communities in Singapore. Um, well, you can see that uh, we, we work mainly with high school students and um, junior college students, but also we, we have worked with children. So, uh, you know, in this slide, you can see how even the children themselves are being empowered and, and are able to make um, decisions or come up with ideas that, that are very interesting. Um, community participation, we, you know, we, we really believe in this because it's about creating ownership and building human capital. We want to engage the community as much pos uh, as possible in terms of decision making so that uh, the, the place and environment that they live in is something that they are a part of uh, creating. We believe very much in the youth voice, uh, even through this workshop, you can see how students are empowered um, as the next generation to make difference, to make a difference, um, particularly in these workshops, they, they present their ideas to stakeholders in community itself, so these are, some of them are, are people who take charge, who are in charge of, of the neighborhoods, some of them are, are members of parliament. Uh, and what has impressed us and excited and made us excited all this time is how um, all these people coming together creates so much more ideas and solutions than um, we would have otherwise if it's just one person designing. Um, this, is, this is a very uh, important slide for me to just you see all the, the planners, these are all directors of the Urban, Urban Redevelopment Authority in Singapore and in bottom you see all these students and, and this is really what we are mm -hmm. about, creating a platform where two opposite sides come and discuss together. Um, we, we believe very much in creativity because um, uh, uh, we believe that everyone has the power of creativity in them and it's only when, when all of us come together that we have better ideas and solutions. Uh, for our built environment. Um, I want to move on to talk about a, a project that we are come, that we are doing uh, in this year. It's called Let's Not Talk About Architecture. It comprises of a competition, a workshop, and a conference. Something that's bringing together the ideas that we have had worked with all all this while over the past three years and bring it, it into an international arena. Uh, 
we are asking the question of can you reclaim the city for those who own it? And uh, what we hope to do is is to take the idea of the workshop and bring it into an international level and empower, encourage more people to do something about the communities um, and to think about architecture in, in, in a different way. So uh, these are some of the works that we have in the pipeline. Uh, the Design My Place workshop uh, is potential to become um, part of the school curriculum uh, in teaching about geography and urban planning. Um, we are rethinking about uh, play spaces in the neighborhood where we're working with one of the town councils in in, uh, in the city. And uh, this is our last slide where you can see both of us. That's me on the right and Sonal on the left. So thank you very much. Hi. Okay, thank you, Joshua and Sun Hong. And that was quite an um, interesting presentation on your engagement with students. So, um, yeah, it, it's really interesting to see how um, students actually get involved, not only architecture students, but high school students and even like kids get involved in the entire urban planning um, realm. So, um, next up, we have um, Claudia Amico from Peru, and she will be presenting for her organization, Expacio Expression. Claudia. And Claudia, can you hear us? Yes, but very badly. Okay, but are you ready to go? Okay, we can start now. Go. Okay. Um, my name is Claudia Mico, and I'm here to represent the organization Espacio Expression. We are um, multidisciplinary organization set up in 2007 who intends to interact actors of the community among themselves and with the environment. What I'm going to show you now is basically our methodology of work. Um, Espacio Expresión believes in an initial phase of creative exploration for the understanding and its relation with society. This we do through planned events, and activities which maintain a certain degree of experimentation in order to allow for unplanned results to be read after evaluating the interaction between the participants and the space being altered by the event. These include temporal occupations, exhibitions, artistic workshops, and uh, media interventions, which is the images shown. Uh, we also believe that walking is an important exercise and part of the space of exploration and understanding since it involves a continuous reflective process which allows for perception, identification, and analysis. We encourage a position of radical and creative openness to encounters um, and what one can observe. After this initial phase, we move on to a stage of creating and projecting through participative design workshops, which are done in public spaces and which are planned to be, uh, or, or spaces which are planned to be intervened, or as organized sessions where leaders of the community take part. Uh, this is part uh, of an interdisciplinary phase of. Shall I stop? So I continue. Uh, this is part of an inter disciplinary phase of analysis and design where we bring together a group of professionals and students from relevant disciplines such as psychology, sociology, economy, arts and architects in the creation of urban development urban development intervention ideas. Uh, this August 2009, the projects we developed, uh, we presented in a format of international workshops and conferences where we invited Colombian architects such as Natalia and Sebastian present here in the direction of the process. Uh, this involves ministries and local businesses acting in the region as part of this process, which becomes a management strategy to draw attention and interest in the execution of projects. In the case of Pisto, which is where we are working, a city devastated by the 2007 earthquake, uh, we developed a series of areas of intervention located by particular economic, social, and environmental situations with specific potentials or problems which characterize them. Intervention ideas included establishing borders of transition, urban agricultural um, borders uh, involving commerce, urban deserts, borders involving wind-generated energy, 
green connection routes which cut across the main uh, communication axis of the city and the recovery of wetlands and the transformation of a high-risk seafront walk into a uh, commercial sector. Uh, part of the participative process is to bring these results back to the community and to all the actors involved. Uh, this we do through interactive exhibitions mm -hmm. in public spaces where local authorities take an active part and where the original creators of the projects are present uh, to present their ideas uh, for intervention and discuss the projects. We also have more strategically designed um, participative focus groups where key open questions are delivered to spark the debate with representatives of the community and coordinators develop a system to be able to spatially map the information that is recovered from these encounters. Part of the process, which happens is mostly parallel to the latter creative and projected stage in the physical and immediate involvement of the community in small scale interventions, which aims to space. These small interventions, such as the ones shown, aim for small but powerful results, uh, which have the ability to transform perceptions about the possibilities and potential of run down urban environments in the community. Uh, becoming active stakeholders uh, of these transformations, uh, the community actors become empowered to decide, to listen, debate, and have an opinion on the future changes that can take in their city. Some examples are public space interventions taking place along the seafront of Pisco, where the waterline water line has moved by away from the original coastline throughout the past six years, leaving a vast redundant space abandoned to littering, drugs, theft, and heavy crime. The strategic built access to the beach integrates children's play park area uh, was an intervention created to reactivate uh, the space attracting different users and attracting different users to this space. The physical intervention interaction process, which we were shown, um, is developed through a cultural program of events and workshops, uh, which starts consolidating what we call an empowerment network of participants in the community. The final stage of Espacio Estudiante's work uh, involves the activation of all spaces. And this is where this empowerment network springs to action in the organization of a cultural program such as festivals, parades, uh, and artistic performances, which are all part of the projects that we develop as an organization. Once this empowerment network has been consolidated, uh, this allows for further design of smaller urban proposals with participants. Uh, which are developed by architecture students through an urban connections course at university. Examples of these interventions are a route designed called the Route of Memory to remember and recognize the most emblematic spaces and lost after the earthquake in Pisco, and an urban art uh, competition designed for the younger public in order to tackle problems of juvenile delinquency and a general feeling of lack of identity. After the 2009 uh, workshop and conferences, the Wetlands Restoration Project was identified as the lever urban and architectural intervention for the development of the city. And it is at this point that there is a general focus of all our, our projects and activities to enforce the proposal. And this is where we are right now. Thank you. very well with what React did in the beginning was that, and which also comes to mind with defining at least the agenda for participation because it's very altruistic to believe that you can sort of engage society and engage all of these kind of people, but um, wh whether you start really down, like in high school level, or where you actually stay with the community, it, it, it's more working with and along the community rather than actually and hopefully also delivering something because it's it's mostly a part of education and it's also like a part of delivering but whatever techniques that you do whether they are Kelvin, are you still guys there uh, are you guys still there yes and yeah. yeah we can't hear anything 
<laughs> Killing at least number three. Uh, no, it, it's okay. No, what I was saying is that it, it is a lot part of education more, and to some extent education for its own sake rather than delivering of projects because it has to, once the architects leave and when they continue working, they have to sort of give that consciousness as the primary effort. Um, we'll now go to uh, Maya, and Maya's project is particularly interesting because it's one where the design process was carried along with the people to deliver the particular project, uh, again in the city of Pisco, which was struck by the earthquake. And I need to highlight uh, some background information was that the, most of these projects occur when you have an absence of government or an absence of policy. And it is within this vacuum that communities seek some sort of outside effort, like an NGO or an outside uh, enterprise, to sort of give way for a very, very sort of obvious need, which is building. So, I mean, Maya will introduce her to her work. And Maya, are you there? I can hear. I hear very bad. Okay, the same as everyone, but what can you do? Okay, Maya, so we're ready to start with you. Now us? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, start now. Okay, hi. Um, I am Mariana Leguilla. We are part of uh, uh, Incluye. Uh, I'm interested in public space and the relation to our projects um, and how we can engage in uh, generating activity in the public space through the projects we generate. Uh, this is based on the fact that we are based in Lima which is obviously a city characterized by its major social differences, and uh, these differences are manifested through the city's built environment and the lack of encounter, the segregation, etc. Uh, since 2002, Incluye has been working with uh, within this context, developing architecture and urban projects, aiming to stitch this fractured city. Um, and society, I guess, uh, focusing on civil participation to support uh, various design processes that encourage uh, urbanism and strategic planning within pedagogy. Uh, briefly, these are two projects that engage in participation, uh, participatory practice, Pisco and Chincha, which is uh, 200 uh, kilometers from Lima. And we gave priority in both cases to the development of a process of communication and negotiation. In the case of Pisco here, uh, this is a project we were commissioned to do a communal center. Uh, this uh, was located in a park. So we thought that um, this project needed a, a participatory approach. So we started developing a process of communication uh, in which uh, the decision of negotiating with the community what we were able to um, exchange in terms of idea, what was the program, what was a communal center to begin with for them, uh, thinking about the right questions, um, what do you need on your neighborhood, what is your favorite corner in Pisco. Uh, in this way, we engage also with, uh, with them in trying to to uh, um, get uh, responses in, in terms of the public good and the right scale of uh, program. After that, we uh, um, started uh, thinking about uh, designing these uh, images, which are we call desire images, uh, that are more about activity than, um, than form or building, let's say, more about the program, the ambience of a place. Uh, these images were, uh, were good in a way that encouraged discussion and the conversation was always about the activity in the place. And this also uh, anticipated a number of negotiations that came right after that. In a further meeting, we uh, created uh, this model that, uh, that carried the design seat of the project. 
uh, in these models, we allowed us to explore the special implications of each decision, in this case, spe specifically the relation of the building to the public space, space as you can see here, uh, in which they had to decide uh, what was going to be the relationship of the building to the park in which it was located. After that, we designed this object, uh, which was more or less an object to enable us a process in uh, which we could uh, develop a game, more or less, and a conversation with them that could allow certain aspects of program and, and form within that building. Just like the former game, this is not an object object, it's an object process that can be transformed during that process and it enables us to center and to focus the conversation, otherwise it can be a lot of loss of energy if it's not more organized. Uh, now we can see the model, our object process and a view of the building. In participatory architecture we believe the project is also a tool. It is also an object process that will change in time. And we believe change is something very positive because it means that the project is alive and one should embrace it in these kind of projects. This is something very different prior to the financing of the building by the city of Pisco. We develop actions in the site in order to activate the space. We transformed an empty lot into a park full of activity for one day. On the slide, the space being used, completely used and what remained. An action is also a speculative activity, but contrary to the design process, one has to get the body involved. And in that sense, it's a design in action. Uh, and it's very difficult, it's very different to engage in conversation than to engage in action. And that gives us and users a different knowledge of the situation. This is project number two, participatory course in Chincha, a couple of months after the earthquake. Uh, the first stage is based on the idea that knowledge is built up through the interaction with people. It was very clear to us that what we needed was the students to learn was uh, an ability to design these objects, games, processes. This is game number one. It's a drawing session with kids. Um, and we use this as a tool to invite their parents to take part in the meetings. It is very difficult to attract the attention of the people and to engage them in a common project. This is why each game should involve this strategy as well. Game number two, people are invited to take a shot of their favorite place in town. The next session, these images were printed large and the game consists in the opportunity to transform these images. This was an exercise of representation and fun and creative game to imagine a different landscape. On a third game, it's a board game, this, this object maps emotional land use through talking, through conversation. Places people like, dislike, consider dangerous, family and friend connections, etc. Conversation is relaxed and focused. On a second stage, it uh, starts with the following question. What can you do with, with $1,200? Each group of students had to propose working with the community, urban interventions, and then build the project partially. The full project would remain at the municipality for its construction in the future. This is one of the projects. The, the, this corner was an underused, abandoned infrastructure built by the municipality. Public bathrooms that had never been used by the public. After a lot of negotiation, the group of students and the people in Chile managed to make a better use of the bathrooms and to transform this facade into a bus stop, which is now a place. Thank you. That was an almost technically perfect presentation. <laughs> um, but I have to say that it's actually quite, quite, in, quite, quite interesting what you do because it's sort of the leap from into and actually putting into design of a building and tapping into the sensitivity of the community which is like the board games and also the relationship between families to some extent which is then what extrapolates into the community and the sense of community which I think is more important. Um, we are going to end now with the most challenging technical uh, <laughs> presentation which is from Natalia and Juan Sebastián which actually are right now in Buenos Aires and they're going to be presenting in Spanish, and I'll be your translator for the evening. And hopefully we'll get an audio, if they can manifest themselves now. 
please say something. Hola. <laughs> uh, yes. Hola. Okay. So we're ready to go. Sala, cuando quieran, empezamos. Um, wait, wait a second. Uh, we need to go back to the first slide. Um, so go to your slide and then Ana, principio tu slide. Okay, we're ready to start. Empezamos. Ya. Yeah. Primero hablaremos de nuestra experiencia durante el 2004-2007 en la empresa de desarrollo urbano de Medellín, Colombia. First, we would like to speak donde first se about desarrollaron los proyectos urbanos estratégicos para la transformación de la ciudad. Our regeneration schemes in Medellín between 2004-2007, which were a particular project of the municipality of Medellín as a social urbanism regeneration scheme project. Dentro de un equipo de trabajo muchas personas y multidisciplinar coordinados por el arquitecto urbanista Alejandro Echeverry dentro del plan Medellín la más educada which was taken under the framework of Medellín the most educated taken by the mayor of the city at the time de la alcaldía de Sergio Fajardo que representa un movimiento cívico independiente de que gana las elecciones públicas y hace un cambio radical en la cultura política de la ciudad which was taken for him as a policy making a strategy uh, as a mayor which was responsible for taking the urban policy as an active scheme for regenerating key strategic areas in Medellín. Que plantea un modelo de intervención urbano basado en el concepto urbanismo social que comprende simultáneamente la transformación física, la intervención social, la gestión institucional y la participación comunitaria which took the premise of social urbanism which pretty much works on four fronts which is the regeneration of the specific areas, the participation of the community, and framework of community-driven processes for learning and inciting civic partnerships. Donde a través de políticas urbanas inició el camino para recuperar la paz y la equidad haciendo proyectos urbanos integrales en las zonas más pobres y violentas. The liberty targeting the most poor regions in the city as a way of bridging the divide between social groups and also as a way of installing a sense of community for the overall city. Donde las obras de arquitectura y urbanismo son las principales herramientas que van de la mano con cambios sociales y culturales profundos en las comunidades. Where the only tool here is architecture which is used as the means to bridge the divide between cultural differences and social differences from various uh, cultural groups. Segundo, motivados por la experiencia anterior, iniciamos una investigación sobre cómo entender e intervenir las ciudades suramericanas, para lo cual realizamos un viaje de estudio durante el 2008 desde Medellín, Colombia, hasta Buenos Aires, Argentina. So, taking this as an inspiration, we therefore proposed a trip from Colombia up to Buenos Aires, going down from Ecuador and then down to Peru, ending in Buenos Aires, that would apply these same strategies. Pasando por Ecuador, Perú, Bolivia y Chile para intercambiar experiencias sobre las ciudades. Para esto presentamos la conferencia de la transformación de Medellín Urbanismo Social 2004-2007 y a partir de esta nos propusieron trabajar con ONGs, municipalidades, universidades en proyectos para Ecuador y Perú aplicando algunos conceptos trabajados en Medellín. So it is within this initiative that we got uh, invited into de delivering a workshop which was conducted in Lima which would apply the rules and regimes that were applied for Medellín into the context of Lima and within this sort of first project we were then called by other organizations to work with them as well. Eh, Fabricio, ¿cómo vamos con las diapositivas? Um, estamos en la de funicular. Bueno, eh, sigamos. Colombia está localizada en el norte de Sudamérica, entre Panamá, Venezuela, Brasil, Perú y Ecuador. Uh, as you y can Medellín see, está localizada en el centro de Colombia, en la región. Colombia is currently in the northern part of South America, and Medellín is in the middle of Colombia. Medellín está localizada en el centro de Colombia, en la región montañosa. Es la segunda ciudad del país con una población de 3 millones de habitantes. It is located in the mountain regions of the city and is a, it has a city of 3 million inhabitants. Que ha sido y sigue siendo un centro industrial y comercial de Colombia. Tiene los grupos financieros más importantes, también la industria textil y cementera localizada en el centro de la economía cafetera. 
Medellín is uh, part of the big uh, cement company, cement, cement in industry for Colombia, as well as part of the network of the coffee industries that fuel the uh, Colombian economy. Esta imagen es tomada desde los barrios ubicados en las laderas del norte de la ciudad. En primer plano pueden verlos, pero en el foco de muchos de nuestros problemas sociales y de seguridad. This image focuses on the social divide that is current of that is typical of most Latin American cities. In the background, you can see the affluent neighborhoods, and in the foreground, you see uh, the the poor areas, which is precisely what this social urban relations scheme is supposed to target. En el fondo, primero pueden ver el centro de la ciudad y detrás de este la parte sur de la ciudad, donde vive la población con mayores ingresos económicos. A la derecha pueden ver el sistema de transporte metrocable que hace parte del sistema del transporte público de la ciudad que conecta los barrios con la ciudad consolidada. En el background you can see the CBD, the Central Business District for the city. In the foreground you can see of course the poorest areas and then in the top you see the the air tram line which was taken as a means of connecting both central and outskirts. Esta foto es tomada en los años 70. Se observa la magnitud de las montañas, uno de nuestros principales valores, pero también uno de nuestros principales problemas. Hoy la mayoría de estas montañas y quebradas han sido ocupadas por nuestros barrios que llamamos comunas. As you can see in this picture, the mountain ranges, which is something that is of particular importance for the city, is also something that actually ac acts against it. And it is, as it is precisely in these mountains where the informal inhabitants and housing actually takes place. That is close to the central, but it's not properly managed by the municipality. El tejido de Medellín es el tejido de dos ciudades, la formal y consolidada ciudad a lo largo del río y la ciudad informal en las laderas de la montaña. El objetivo, conectarlas. The purpose of Medellín pretty much has a double issue, which is the managing of the central permanent and uh, developed city and the managing of the outskirts in the mountain range informal city. Este plano describe cómo la ciudad está dibujada por las quebradas, riqueza natural que ha desaparecido gradualmente por el incontrolado desarrollo urbano. En contra de esta tendencia, las intervenciones puntuales se ubicaron con el objetivo de redibujar esta geografía so in this scheme, you s in this diagram, you see the layout of the creeks that actually are part of the river network for Medellin, which have been completely taken over by the development of the city. And it is with the ambition of the project to re-approach the, the city in relation to these creeks as means of focusing strategic uh, developments for parts that mostly need it in relation to this main axis. Muchos de ustedes han oído hablar de Medellín como una de las ciudades más violentas del mundo, situación que fue cierta. La tabla describe la tendencia de violencia por cada 100.000 habitantes de la ciudad. You should know that Medellín was also considered as one of the most dangerous cities in Colombia due to its high murdering rate. As you can see in the top right, you can see the bar chart for, sorry, the, the diagram for the development or the worsening of murdering cases in the city. En 1991, Medellín fue una de las ciudades más violentas del mundo. Hoy estamos en, con 381 muertes. Hoy estamos en 26. Medellín hoy está dentro del promedio de las ciudades latinoamericanas. Fortunately, as of 1991, when we had 385 deaths, currently Medellín has 21 deaths, um, which is within the average of the Latin American city. Este plano muestra dónde se localizaron todos los pro programas y proyectos, los parques biblioteca y la renovación de su entorno, los proyectos urbanos integrales y el sistema de estructuras lineales, planeada para interconectar las intervenciones puntuales. So this map shows exactly where, where in the map of the city we will be including the three developments, which is that of libraries, um, development of communities, and also development of infrastructure connecting those communities in relation to the overall Medellín map. Pueden ver el río a lo largo de la ciudad, el metro con dos líneas, dos metro cables y el metro plus. Este plano muestra el índice de desarrollo humano en 2004. You could see here the main infrastructure lines, which is the metro cable, which is the sky tram. Uh, you see also the other main infrastructure roads that connect the city to the outskirts. 
El verde claro indica las áreas más pobres, mientras que los verdes oscuros muestran las áreas con mayor desarrollo humano. The light lo green que areas, la administración de Fajardo trató de hacer. The light green areas show the poorest areas and the dark green areas show the more consolidated parts. Lo que la administración de Fajardo trató de hacer fue oscurecer los verdes más claros a través de una masiva inversión pública y de nuestras intervenciones físicas. Well, literally, the Fajardo um, time at mayor of Medellín was to pretty much turn this map completely green. A pesar de todos los problemas que hemos vivido en la ciudad, la gente asumió desde la administración y desde la comunidad una actitud positiva y apasionada para el cambio. Se mantuvo desde la campaña electoral una cercanía con la ciudadanía. A very important key aspect of the Fajardo uh, time in office was that the community itself was looking forward for this change, regardless of all the bad news and murdering weight. So it is within that compromise between the municipality and the communities that change could actually take place. Comprometiéndola con el proceso y buscando su confianza a medio de una estrategia de comunicación y también desde los pactos ciudadanos, donde todos se comprometían a aportar desde sus capacidades. So it was within the involvement of the community via a highly mediatized communication campaign that would win the approval and win the support of the community as a means of delivering the project that would then ensure the pacification of the poor areas. El programa de parques, biblioteca y equipamientos educativos para dignificar los barrios son grandes equipamientos entendidos como centros integrales de servicio con altos estándares de calidad, públicos y de libre acceso. The libraries were used as a strategy to increase the general public space and also the, the, the civic space in the key strategic areas that were of the most worst conditions as a way of revitalization too. Los proyectos fueron seleccionados por concurso público nacional buscando el mejor diseño. Además de otras políticas implementadas, para nosotros la arquitectura tiene un valor adicional, tiene la connotación de un cambio de espíritu. The designs for the, the design for the library were called from a national competition and for us we consider architecture to actually have the possibility to add value to a given area that enheightens the condition of the space from which there becomes an empowering of the community and a heightening of the spirit of the community. Que la gente sienta que tiene lo mejor, el mejor edificio público de la ciudad, el mejor sistema de transporte, el mejor lugar para vivir para ellos. To make the community to make the community believe that they have the best civic space, the best transportation link and the best possible space for living as a way of reappropriating their commitment to the city. La localización de estos parques biblioteca en la ciudad fortalecen las centralidades barriales. Están conectadas con un sistema de transporte público de alta calidad con el fin de dar acceso a cualquier persona de la ciudad. The use of, as you can see in the map, of the placement of these park libraries were strategically deployed as a means of developing a, a network with the infrastructure network that would, be, that would allow the city center with the outskirts be connected through these strategic points. Son proyectos que buscan redescubrir el sistema natural de la ciudad como las quebradas. These are projects that also want to rescue the natural resources such as the creeks for the city. Complementando el área de la biblioteca también hay salas de internet, aulas para talleres de capacitación, ludotecas, auditorio, acompañado de un espacio público. To complement the program of the library, there's also a series of auxiliary programmatic uh, layouts, such as internet facilities, uh, conference hall, auditorium, workshop, and school class facilities. Un espacio público que se utiliza como extensión de las actividades que se programan constantemente dentro de la agenda cultural de la ciudad. And the public space is taken as a literal extension of the contained building public space program that would then go towards the community area. El tercer programa son los proyectos urbanos integrales. Esta ha sido la estrategia urbana con mayores impactos en la ciudad. The third project scheme was the Integrated Urban Regeneration Scheme proper that taps and has the most lasting impact in the overall community. Son proyectos urbanos que incorporan todos los elementos del desarrollo de forma planeada y simultánea en un territorio definido. 
y además se hacen con la activa participación de la comunidad. These are projects that specifically were laid out in consultation with the community, therefore ensuring the acceptance of such proposals in the specific areas. Y se localizan los barrios de origen marginal con problemas profundos de desigualdad y violencia. Which los podemos ver los tres primeros que se realizaron en la pantalla. Which are obviously located in the areas where there's the highest degree of uh, social divide and social differences. As you can see in the map, the three areas which were targeted specifically. Se trabajaron en tres áreas, la coordinación interinstitucional, la participación comunitaria y el componente físico. It was working on three aspects, the participatory nature with the community, the particip participatory nature with the government, and consultation with the community. Estas dos imágenes resumen un poco cómo se trabajó un plano del proyecto urbano integral de la nororiental, donde estratégicamente se definen los proyectos con tiempos y presupuestos, y al lado los talleres de imaginarios que se realizaban con niños, ancianos, en, en algunos casos para definir los espacios públicos o los nombres de los espacios públicos. This image shows precisely the way we were operating. On the one hand, we're looking at the proper uh, scheme and plan layouts for delivery of the project, and on the other, we were also working in simultaneous with the community via workshops and consultation games um, as means of engaging with the community in the delivery of the project. Algunos ejemplos: el parque de la imaginación, donde los niños especialmente pedían que hubiera una muchas superficies para deslizarse. Plan de puentes que conectan los barrios que en algún momento estuvieron desconectados tanto por la condición natural como por la situación de violencia. Some specific requirements brought forward from the community were in case of the park to the top, which was um, the community pretty much asked for a park with lots of sliding surfaces from which they can actually slide down, probably taken from their mountain and ranges uh, context, and also uh, have a series of bridges that would actually connect parts that would otherwise would not be able to be connected. También parque mirador del ajedrez donde la gente pedía un lugar para mirar la ciudad y mesas de ajedrez. Pequeños lugares para el encuentro conectados por un sistema de parque lineales. And also inclusion of a park with a series of uh, chess facilities where people actually can play chess whilst enjoying the view of within the mountain range connected through the linear network of parks via the bridges and via these interventions. El cuarto es la vivienda social. La inversión pública se orientó a las poblaciones de menores ingresos en situaciones críticas de habitabilidad y riesgo con problemas históricos, con el fin del ordenamiento territorial. The fourth one is the implementation of housing strategy that would deliberately charge also the most rundown areas as a way of revitalizing their scheme in, in tandem with this notion of rescuing civic uh, awareness in the city. El programa busca hacer reasentamientos en el mismo sitio para que la población mantenga sus lazos económicos y efectivos con el lugar y hacerlo factible para, el munic para la municipalidad. The project specifically re refurbishes the property of the, of the people within the area without forcing displacement, which is a big issue, uh, therefore preserving uh, the social and economic links that the residents have uh, while enjoying the renewed uh, urban fabric. El quinto programa es el plan de paseos, calles emblemáticas y parques lineales de quebradas que, para con, que son para conectar la ciudad. The fifth strategy is the linear park network, which uses a series of creeks and a series of <laughs> a series of creeks, a series of parks, and a series of um, observatories throughout the city as a means of linking the entire project with punctuating civic spaces. Los proyectos incorporan de forma simultánea el espacio público, la movilidad con, el, con prioridad en el transporte público y la cultura urbana con la participación ciudadana. The pr these projects deliberately link the infrastructure of the city, the most rundown areas, the, punc the punctuating civic spaces and the libraries as a means of revitalizing the entire fabric of the city, therefore bringing down the green into an entirely green divide. 
eh, pasamos ahora de Medellín a Lima, en el distrito de Comas, al norte de Lima, capital del Perú, entre el desierto y el mar, con una rica diversidad cultural. So in the tour that they proposed, they went also to Lima, and specifically they were targeting the, the region of Comas, which is located in the city of Lima, which is rich in cultural heritage, as well as this, the deep social divide that is present. Donde el 70% de la población vive en barrios de origen marginal con casi 10 millones de habitantes, se desarrolla la fiesta internacional de teatro callejero en calles abiertas, FITECA. Where 70% of the population live in um, informal settlements and with 10 million population, the city of Lima also hosts an uh, event which is called FITECA, which is an informal uh, culture fair that brings people from this uh, informal settlements every every year. Que surge como una iniciativa de agrupaciones artísticas, culturales, sociales y educativas, convirtiéndose en, en el motor del desarrollo ur, del desarrollo de la zona. Which by bringing them together raises the awareness and therefore exploits the possibility of proposing new ideas and means of moving on and moving forward the specific areas. Con la agrupación Sitio de Lima desarrollamos un plan para el sector, identificando proyectos y desarrollamos uno de estos, donde fue fundamental la relación establecida de esta agrupación con, con la población. So taking another participatory architecture group in Lima, which is called Sitio, we took on board their already developed areas in the city as a means of applying our concept that we were working before. Mediante recorridos, reuniones y encuestas que se siguieron haciendo para la revisión y discusión del proyecto, Through a series of meetings, el cual planteó diferentes posibilidades para que la gente escogiera. Through a series of meetings, workshops and discussion, we were laying out a series of events and a series of consultation opportunities from which people could take as means of engaging with us. Ahora pasamos de Lima a Puerto Viejo, en el noreste de Ecuador, que está localizado en medio de un valle fértil eh, por donde pasa un río meándrico. So, from Lima we go to Puerto Viejo in Ecuador, where a meandering river again, propose, again sets the divide in the city. Conformado por una ciudad formal en la parte plana del valle, con una parte en riesgo por inundación y la otra inform informar en las laderas con riesgo por deslizamiento. Where the current city in the flat in the flatland is in, in risk is in risk of um could you could we repeat the last slide? Eh uh, riesgo por inundación y las laderas por riesgo por deslizamiento. Where the flatland is in risk of flooding and the informal city which is again in the mountain range next to the city is in risk of uh, landslides. La municipalidad con apoyo de la cooperación internacional europea desde el 2004 inicia un proceso de trabajo participativo, participativo para la planificación regional y urbana. So taking the initiative of Medellin, the Belgian cooperative invited us to propose a series of strategies that would bridge the divide that was apparent in the city. Aquí conformamos un grupo con la asociación belga y una organización italiana un equipo de trabajo multidisciplinar. So we partnered with the corp Belgian corporate as well as an Italian team of specialists that would help us in applying the strategies of Medellin to the city. Donde se desarrollaron en los primeros lineamientos para la planificación urbana, identificando las problemáticas y oportunidades y buscando alternativas y, desar y buenos desarrollos para eh, el tema del riesgo principalmente which again laying out a series of key strategic links between the infrastructure, the, the, the division of the most affluent and the least affluent uh, regions of the city. Uh, we were using the same strategies uh, as Medellin for the city, but more focused on the key issues of risk, such as landslides and rainfall. And that's it with the final presentation. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. So I thought we were never going to make it to six.
Sorry. Yeah, so um, thank you for um, actually saving through um, this six presentations. So um, five, sorry, five presentations. Yeah, so now we're actually open um, the Q&A session to the floor. And um, one observation that we uh, made throughout the presentation was the constant um, um, repeat or reminder that who, we, who our target um, audience are and who our target um, um, people that we want to actually engage are. So basically each of these groups, um, whatever projects they, um, they are working on, whether it be it um, working with Wartown Zone or Earthquake Stricken Zone, um, the underlying um, stakeholder that they always work with is the community. So perhaps we could, um, does anybody want to ask a question for now? Or we could start a question. Um, well, we actually laid them a questionnaire for them to an ask um, and also define, which is for them, what is community? And if any one of you could like to speak up on what is um, a practice of the organization is community involvement, how do you define community as a general concept that you can apply to different conditions? Like Claudia, for example, the community in Pisco, in a, in a city that has actually been affected by an earthquake, before and after, obviously there's a, di a very different community altogether before and after the earthquake. So how, how do you yes. believe that you identify community as a subject matter for your particular participation uh, techniques? Um, well, part of the work that we do is actually um, building community. I mean. Community can be integrated or disintegrated. They are the people that are interacting with the environment. And what we are trying to do is to empower them by basically becoming a stronger network of a community, establishing the ties between members of this community so they can start acting as a group and um, asking for asking things, things, for things, 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 asking for change. In, in their environment, asking for rights, asking for opportunities. So basically, before working with a community, I think there is, um, uh, there in, in our scenario, there is a stage of empowerment because of the particular scene that we have encountered in Pisco, which is basically a very, um, a community which what we encountered was they don't participate, they are passive, they have been very much um, accustomed to asking for assistance, asking for help. And this was all part of the way that aid was brought after the earthquake. So they have been more uh, uh, stereotypes of people that are only, they, they are only able to ask for assistance and um, th this is completely the opposite of empowerment. So what we are trying to do is um, make them uh, transform their needs within a group um, so that they are able to create their own project for transformation of their space and for the transformation of, of the, their living conditions and the situation they're in. I mean, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have Joshua, which actually works in Singapore, which, I mean, is very obvious to deal or talk about participation in like highly sensitive regions of war struck areas or earthquake areas or poor countries. But Singapore is sort of special case. So Joshua, let me ask you another question. What is participatory architecture in Singapore, specifically in a city, city state that is not particularly suffering of any major sort of social problem? yet you still apparently work with the community and, and means of empowering them in some sense. Right. Um, I think we are pretty fortunate to live in a country where we have a very good, efficient government who takes care of a lot of um, the problems or a lot of the needs that are in the society. So in some ways, when we started, we, we, we were figuring out um, our way around also, trying to understand what is the best way to um, engage people and, um, and, and to get them to participate in um, our projects. Uh, as you can see, one of the things that we did was um, 
engaging students in workshops. Um, I, I think what we realized was that uh, things can, could end up getting so easy that, that people forget that they have a part to play in the community because um, the fact that the government does everything for you doesn't necessarily mean, firstly, that there are no needs, um, and secondly, it, it sort of creates a culture where people um, lack an ownership because uh, they, they don't have to do anything, everything is done for them, and, and that kind of creates a, a, a sense of indifference sometimes. Um, so, uh, even, even a simple uh, project like the workshop in, in giving students an opportunity to have their ideas and their solutions heard, um, it becomes a very big thing because then we're reminding them that, you know, in order for, for, for uh, this place to be something that you can own, um, you, you need to take part in doing something to participate in the building of the, of, of the, the neighborhood or, or your own building environment. Um, but you're right, you see, because Singapore becomes such a transitory space where, uh, where, where it doesn't really, um, you know, where, where more and more people are deciding that they don't necessarily have to stay in Singapore, they can stay you know, elsewhere. And then there's that problem of, um, of, of, of people who are, you know, especially the young people who are moving out, um, because there is no sense of ownership in the thing. So uh, give them an opportunity to do something and get out of uh, their ideas and, and helping them understand that, uh, that their voice matters, that they, that they are seen in certain decisions matter, um, goes a long way. So it's a lot of our approaches so far. Uh, and, um, having said that there, are, that, there are small gaps that we have identified. Uh, for example, Singapore is, is, is becoming quite a bit of an elderly country. Yes. You know, a lot, a lot of We're losing you. We're losing you. Slowly but surely losing you. I think we have That's a where question we're here. to realize also that, um, that uh, in terms of living spaces and, and engaging the elderly, uh, that's something that's still a long, that there's still a lot to be done in those areas. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Joshua. So, um, yeah, Joshua is um, breaking up a few moments just now. So basically, uh, let me just summarize what he just said. So um, in Singapore, on the contrary. Um, the, its citizens does not really need to be served or eat, uh, or they need to be helped because everything is provided for them. So on the contrary, what they need is actually precisely is this kind of empowerment because since everything is provided for them, they they they, they, they tend to take things for granted. So um, so a, a simple workshop with the kids and the high school students actually um, just. A just a simple workshop like this actually provides them to have a voice to take ownership to 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 have um, to actually stake their claim for for where they live in and and uh, other projects which um, react tries to work with is with the elderly and how the elderly can have create their own kind of shared spaces with um, other generations and s and so on so um, does a anyone have a question for them Um, yes. Yeah, you, you can just shout your question. Uh, thank you. Hello. Um, actually, my question is for Joshua. I don't know about Singapore. I don't think I'm Singaporean myself. Um, my question is that by Describing yourself as an alternative practice, it seems as though you're saying that ownership, um, the people's sense of ownership for the country will always be um, something that you aim for but not quite achievable, as in that this will always be an alternative opinion, uh, maybe a something that something in opposition or in reaction to um, a, w a bigger problem that you can't solve of um, people not being able to have that sense of ownership. So um, my question is just, when you describe yourself as a, an alternative practice, um, are you not also in, in a way um, affirming that the current situation that um, of the largest social problem in Singapore, which is apathy? Okay, thank you. Joshua? Uh, yeah, 
I'm sorry, um, I need you to summarize the question for me because I, I was hearing it in bits. Okay, are you having... So by, by branding yourself as an alternative practice, are you actually, actually confirming the status quo of um, the um, actual scene scenarios in Singapore, conditions in Singapore? Can you, Sorry, can, can you, you hear that? that if, no, I, I'm hearing you, but um, it's a bit. Um, okay, can you hear my question? Or, or do we have another question first? We can come back to the question in a bit. There's, there's, also, there's also another thing that um, maybe once once we leave school they become apparent that normally in development of projects there's, there's apparently extra tick in the box that you have to make in planning which is has your project engage the community uh, so it's very fashionable to actually use this term in the first place um, and it's actually it's, it's, a, it's a requirement in some uh, schemes that people have to achieve so most of these projects, as you can see, hardly ever reach the stage of building a project or actually relish more in the communication strategies, per se. Um, which is why we actually brought forward the uh, Natalia and Sebastian, since they actually work the, the scale of the city, which was sort of combining a lot the, this participatory with delivery that was uh, powered by the municipality. I would like to ask, however, Maya and Mariana, um, something about the techniques that they, meant that they used which was specifically the, 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 the use of game and communication strategies because it is uh, quite a multi multidisciplinary approach. One where while we are architects, we are also communicators. And it, it no? Can you listen to me now? No? Yep. Why is it down? Yeah, I think it's better if I write it down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, We can try, we can try. <laughs> Answering that question, you don't know what it is. <laughs> no, no, but we couldn't hear the question. But can you hear me now? No. We can, we can answer the former question. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't hear the question right now. You can write it down, but to what you mentioned before, can you hear me? Yes, we can. The, about what community is, even though we work in a really small scale. I thought it was important to mention that uh, for us, you know, we were encountering a neighborhood that was only single use with housing. And so that's one of the reasons the neighborhood was really not, uh, not encountered as a cohesive community because in a neighborhood, you have to have a, sh a lot of uh, shared facilities in order to facilitate this community involvement and engagement. So our building in that case was, or we saw it that way, was something that could facilitate that creation of that community through the process till the building itself. Um, I don't know if that answered your question, but in our specific project, that's what we saw as um, community and that's the problem um, in that, that case. Now, the following question that you just said, we couldn't hear it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe you can write it down. Thank you. So it's in effect. So actually, um, we, oh, okay, time is running out. So we are left with one more question. Maybe a short question. Yeah, Please if it's, it's sorry, Camille. I think, is, can we still answer the question about architect, architect as a communicator? <laughs> um, I, I would just like to point out, because this is something that always has come out in the participation architecture courses at university, where students become frustrated in ways that they try and they encounter new fields where they say, well, shouldn't this be done by a 
communicator, social communicator. And I mean, to a certain extent, I think participation needs to involve other disciplines. It needs to be multidisciplinary in order, in order to become more political, in order to talk about um, transforming relations and have a, an architectural or an urban transformation that also involves a social transformation, which is, I think, what, in our case, this is what we're talking about. Um, but on the other hand, there are many fields that the architects can explore in participation, new fields, and this is what we try and do in our in our courses with architecture students, is to give them different tools for them to explore, uh, such as games, such as um, uh, uh, experiments, um, occupation of the space, dynamics, uh, and this all starts to open up a new field of knowledge for them, of communication, of reflection. And it is basically these practices which are not so conventional, but nonetheless they should be taken into account in architecture pedagogy. Um, we have a question, uh, a final one. Hi. Um, wait, first of all, just to say thank you uh, for all being there on the screen. It's, it's quite amazing to have you all speaking from these different countries um, into this room. It's, I think this has never happened before in our school. Um, and secondly, I think it's to follow on on Claudia, what you just said. Um, the, a lot of the projects that students work upon, that students work on here in the school, um, are very much based on assumptions that we have to take because we often work on projects that happen in other countries, um, on other side of the world that we visit maybe for a particular, a small amount of time. But um, there's often a big lack of real understanding or of, um, uh, um, of um, feedback from the actual uh, places that we're dealing with. A lot of the projects here deal with looking at form by analyzing site plans, by uh, looking at um, uh, more the form, but it's, it's really encouraging to see how your projects are dealing very much with a, uh, a straight relationship between what the, those who do um, experience these uh, places every day, and I think we can learn from those. So just to thank you. No. Thank you. What? What was the question? It's not a question. Okay, it's, it's a, a comment. comment and, uh, okay. Yeah. And we. Have ah, okay. Okay. So ba basically, um, the, the comment was that um, that it's very commendable that 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 you guys took this uh, initiative to 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 actually continuously to be with your state, um, to, to have an interest with your community and develop projects over a long period of time, as compared to um, an architectural project in school where it only takes place over a few months to a year. And yeah, so that's a comment. If I, if, if I, it's a very sh sort of um, short comment. Work in progress, all of this, and also talking about the format. I mean, it will see has like more technical issues than any other event I've seen so far in my five years here. Um, I think it's Can up to us also stuff. just to sort of trial these um, schemes because it's very easy for us to sort of record the lectures and then just see them when you're at home and not actually sort of go to the next step, which is bringing people that can't necessarily be here and to some extent maybe not necessarily be here because there's something in coming to London that is very akin to an artist that deals with very sensitive uh, issues and then comes and exhibits them in the tape, which is sort of, to some extent, communication exercise, but also perhaps uh, an ego project, which is something that certain schemes should operate within the certain communities. And it's something that I think we believe we should sort of at least be consistent when we approach them. So I think on that note, we're gonna wrap up. So thank you for coming. but I think Claudia has um, written something. Um, what we want to say is that we've always 
believe that it's very difficult to communicate it to participation and to it's 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 very, very easy to forget that you're an architect and it's very difficult um, to always keep that in mind um, because generally you are not um, keen in communication skills so that takes a long time and process um, to develop those skills um, and what we have done in the in these games what we have always tried to develop and I think that we were more successful um, in in Pisco in the Pisco games um, is that these uh, games should have a design seat within so this um, this object would would help us design spatially with a larger group of people uh, because as we all know the design the the create process is very exciting and it's amazing when you discover something that's happening through a model for example and it's very difficult to share that moment so in these models that's why we think they were very successful um, we were able to do so so I think that it's like the most interesting part of our work <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you <laughs> thank you One quick thank you to Calvin and Fabrizio for uh, actually uh, making this experiment happening, happen. Thank you, guys. <laughs>